Uh, okay, so my so my contribution that some of you can hear is um is is for, is is to sort of provide insights from political science and policy process research, and so so I, I just I've just uh, put a blog in the chat, and it, and I th I thought the first thing I had to do really was to define some terms because I'm conscious that there is notionally a policy design profession or interest, but it's from people who I think often have no idea what each other, what each other's backgrounds are. So here are some of the terms that I think I would take for granted in my field. Uh, and it's, um, I think the, 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 the definition of policy design often comes from people like Michael Howlett, who would say, you know, think of it as, as an activity. So you define policy aims, identify the policy tools to deliver those aims. And so it's quite similar to the definitions you would have of policy analysis, I think, but you know, design as this other, other kind of function, I mean. And so often I think in studies of policy design, people use the verb and noun distinction or an architectural metaphor to distinguish between the act of design and the output. And I think the, ar the architectural metaphor is, I, I find it useful because the output in architecture, you know, is, is the blueprint it's the very specific detailed design uh, that, that I think some people might associate with, with policy design. So I think in terms of the outputs, um, when we talk about policy tools, they can def be defined quite narrowly as, as policy instruments like taxing and spending or regulation or assigning staff or other resources, information sharing or nudging and such like. Or they can be defined much more widely to include the processes that, that was mentioned about, uh, you know, participatory or deliberative processes. So even even with that level of definition, we could be describing two very different things. You know, one is a highly centralized process involving very few people to produce the equivalent of a blueprint, you know, a, you know something, a design that you can point to an output. Or you could be describing a decentralized largely uncoordinated process that involves many people and perhaps built on a principle that if you are seeking a blueprint, you're missing the point of participation and deliberation. These things by design should emerge from processes. This should, you should not think of us as a specific point in time. So I think policymaking research tends to focus on two aspects there. One is measuring policy change with reference to the instruments that, that I've talked about. So you, we often, you know, I think now, talk about your know, policy mixes or complex policy mixes. Maybe design is part of that or, is, or generates all of that. But And most of these studies suggest almost all policy change is, is minor and there is a very small amount of major policy change, but you can't predict what it would be. You know, it certainly doesn't relate to processes of policy design. And then the second thing we focus on is how to understand complex policy making systems or environments or other metaphors to show that the policy design takes place in a much wider process. And so those kind of studies, I think, are the source of my kind of cautionary tales here. There are three messages of, of doom. So the first is uh, really to suggest, or you know, the, the overarching point I think of all these messages is that one of the reasons that the old policy design studies of the 80s seem to disappear, or people lost interest in talking about policy design, is because lots of people concluded that there is a very indirect or perhaps non-existent link between policy design processes and actual policy, uh, you know, your public policy or policy processes. You know, the, 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 the design process appeared to have a minimal influence on public policy uh, outputs and outcomes. And so I guess people were thinking, why, why are we studying this thing that has such a, a limited impact? Now, I think people that now focus on new policy design to reinvigorate the field. Uh, and I think these cautionary tales are, are, are there to suggest that you, know, you can call something new, uh, but it's not new. And its decline did not relate to the things that we now associate with new policy design, which is you know, sophisticated tools and techniques and, and lots of different ways to think about it. The, the design did not decline because of the lack of these tools or sophisticated techniques or insights. They declined for that reason I mentioned. So you know, three final points then in terms of what I would pay attention to. The first is this inevitable gap between the things that people require from policymaking and what they can actually provide. So I think policy anal analysts and designers are often focused on what they need to re or require to get the job done or produce the outcomes they, they seek. Policy process researchers tend to focus on the major 
inevitable gaps between those requirements and actual policy processes, you know, to, to the extent that the link between design and policy is difficult to identify. So that's a big problem, I think. I, I, I don't know if they, these are, are bigger or smaller than each other. The second thing to pay attention to is the strong rationale for the policy processes that undermine policy design. I think from a design perspective, lots of parts of the policy process seem seem needlessly incoherent. You know, the um, there are too many people spread across too many processes, not talking to each other, or not not uh, you know not not doing things in a way that is. Uh, that produces something that, that could be seen as coherent in the end. Uh, but but these are inevitable, you know, these are features of political systems. So some of them relate to political choice, you know, such as to share a responsibility for producing many instruments across many levels of or different types of government. And when you're making that choice, it's with minimal reference to any idea of, you know, optimal policy design or anything like that. If you think of the, the kind of classic one is Scottish devolution or independent or you know, Scottish devolution. These these d demands for autonomy relate. Uh, you do not relate to the sense that they will then cooperate with the UK government to produce something very coherent. You know, that would be kind of missing the point. Some of these outcomes relate to necessity, you know, to delegate responsibility to many different people across many policy communities, each with their own way to define and, and address problems. In that case, there's no real ability to know how all of those responsibilities will be connected and what everything would add up to. But the point is, each of these communities, they have their own ways to define and address pro uh, policy problems. They make sense to them, and it's only when you try and put them all together that it doesn't make sense. But you know, each part of that political system, uh, people are doing things that have their own rationale. The third thing is that a lot of these things uh, that we talk about in terms of you know, poor delivery or that sort of thing, they cannot really be solved by design methods. So I, can, uh, I suppose the classic one is when seen from the top down, design problems often uh, you know, relate to this perceived lack of delivery or follow through in relation to the high level outputs that people have agreed. You know, so great design, poor delivery. But I think when seen from the bottom up, they represent legitimate, legitimate ways to incorporate, you know, local stakeholder and citizens' perspectives. And there's going to be this inevitable gap between what people want uh, in a kind of centralised process versus what they are willing to accept in, in a decentralised process. And I think, you know, that that suggests that these things are solved through political choices. They're not solved with a greater focus on de design processes and techniques. Okay, I'm guessing that was 10 minutes. Thank you.